guys, this is Nova Gnome Creations, and welcome to my super beginner-friendly gnome tutorial. The materials needed for this tutorial are four shades of yarn, and I am using a worsted weight. Uh, you can use any weight of yarn that you would like. Just go down a hook size or two uh, from what is recommended on the ball band. Um, so I am using a worsted weight yarn, which recommends a 5.5 millimeter hook, but I'm using a 3.75 millimeter hook. And you do this so that it keeps your stitches tight enough so that your stuffing doesn't show through when you're doing amigurumi, um, which is crocheting plushies. You're going to need a beard color, a skin tone, a body color for like your body, uh, your gnome's outfit, and a hat color. You're also going to need some polyfill or some yarn scraps to stuff with, or you could use a combination of both if you would like to use up some of those little yarn scraps. Uh, you're going to need a darning needle for sewing with, uh, which is a yarn needle. You're going to need some scissors. Any type of scissors will do. Uh, you're going to need a stitch marker. I would highly recommend a stitch marker when you're working with amigurumi because you work in the round and it's easier to keep track of your first stitch. You will also need your hook in one to two sizes smaller than the weight of yarn that you are using recommends. Um, I usually go about two sizes down and you will optionally need a row counter. If you don't have one, that's no problem. You can keep track in a lot of ways and I go over those as we are working. Um, but you have things around the house that you could use. Um, and optionally, if you would like to use a hot glue gun to make this a more accessible um, tutorial for you, you may use a hot glue gun. And I show you how to use both a hot glue gun and um, the sewing method with your yarn needle. Also optionally, you'll need a pet brush to brush your yarn. In this tutorial, I will show you how to do both a brushed or unbrushed beard. So you really have full customization of what you want your gnome to look like. This tutorial is going to be broken up into three videos um, and I am going to walk you through the process very closely so that you have all of the help you could need. And this is going to be a longer tutorial, but it's going to be really beginner friendly. So the first video is going to be the body of your gnome. And the second video will be the hat, the arms and the hands, and the nose. And then the third video is going to be all of the assembly process and the beard. Um, and then in the future, I plan on making customization option videos with some suggestions on how to theme your uh, gnomes if you would like help with that. So things like flowers, appliques, Christmas ideas, Halloween ideas, different things that you could do based off of this super beginner friendly gnome tutorial to customize your gnome and make different types of gnomes. So I hope you enjoy. Last but certainly not least, we are on to the assembly process. So you're gonna need all of the pieces that we have made so far. And you're also going to need some white yarn. I'm just gonna use this just active worsted. It is a uh, medium four weight yarn. It's from the Dollar Tree, and it's 80% polyester, 20% acrylic. If you're interested, um, it's just a nice white. Um, and then you're also going to want your hook and probably some scissors at some point also. First step in assembling our gnome is going to be um, adding the nose. So you're just going to want to take your body and kind of look it over. See if you have a side that you prefer to be the front. Um... I think I'll go ahead and I'll have this be the front of my gnome. So once you've decided on the front of your gnome, you can go ahead and grab your nose, your gnome nose, not the nose on your face. <laughs> um, and oh yeah, we're also going to need a darning needle. I'm sorry, I forgot to mention that. Um, and in the nature of keeping this accessible to everyone, by the way, you do not have to sew on your parts. Um, you can hot glue them on or um, you could probably fabric glue them on. I haven't fabric glued myself, but I'm assuming that you could fabric glue considering, you know, the material we're working with. Um, you could probably super glue, but hot glue is what I would recommend if you want to glue. Um, it kind of melts the fibers together if you're using acrylic yarn. So um, you put it on nice and hot and then just kind of push on it and wait a few seconds and let it dry and that will be on there nice and sturdy and you can really pick your placement. Um, 
for the nature of this being accessible, I'm going to show both options so that you can choose. So I'm gonna start off with sewing because this is the first step and I wanna make sure that you know how to sew on your parts. Um, and I feel like hot gluing them on is a little bit easier to um, just know how to do. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to thread the yarn um, that's attached to our nose, the little tail we left for sewing, onto our darning needle. And um, not that this will help you at this moment in time, but for future reference, if you um, are buying things to work on amigurumi, I highly recommend these curved hook, uh, curved tip needles. They're great for amigurumi because we're working with things that we are going to be sewing into a ball instead of straight through. Um, and we want our hook to come back out. And I find that the curve of this really is just really helpful for amigurumi. Um, and you can get these on Amazon and I'm sure you can get them lots of other places. I just searched um, curved darning needle, I believe. All right, so to see where we want to place our nose, go ahead and grab your hat and kind of plop her on there. Now, when you're making a gnome, you want your nose to be about halfway under the hat um, because the idea is that their face is kind of hidden under their hat. So go ahead and kind of hold your uh, gnome's nose on and get an idea of where you want your hat to sit. Now don't push your hat down super far, you know, let it let it rest just kind of where it sits um, because you want it to be a little bit loose because we're also going to be putting arms under it. So this looks like a pretty good spot for me to attach my nose. So I'm just gonna remove the hat and kind of hold the nose there. And this gives me an idea of where I would like my nose to be. So at this point, if you would like to, you can pin your nose in place. Um, you could pin it with a um, with a push pin or um, not a push pin. What are they called? The little sewing sewing pins. Um, or you can use a darning needle if you have one of these really long darning needles. That could be really handy because you can just kind of you know stab down through everything and do it. But for the um, purposes of accessibility, I'm going to assume that you don't have anything to stab it down with, and I'm just going to hold it in place so that you can see, um, you know, the least amount of tools way of doing it. Okay, so the way that we want to do this is, um, by the way, I'm assuming that you have already stuffed your nose with your yarn tail, um, like I did when I was doing the tutorial. Um, but if you need to, you can put a little bit of stuffing or a little bit of yarn tail in there um, just to, you know, give it a little bit of stuffing. It really doesn't need much. Just the yarn tail was enough for mine. So I'm going to just kind of hold it against here and find the start. So there's the start of mine. I'm going to turn it so that I can start where I'm at. Kind of stretch out the base of my nose a little bit with my fingers. Okay. I just want to make sure that I've got it kind of spread out. And now that I've kind of messed with it a little bit, I'm going to do another hat check just to make sure I've still got it in the right spot. I had moved it down a little bit, so I'm going to move it up a smidgen to, what do we think, right here? Yeah, right there. Um, and then I'm just going to begin to attach it. So the way that you're going to attach your nose is you're going to look for the um, outermost loop, this front loop of um, your single crochet round that we ended on. And you're going to use this front loop along with um, attaching to the body. So there's a couple different ways you can do this depending on what's most comfortable for you. You can individually um, go through here and pull up and then go through the body. Sorry, I need to pull my tail. There we go. Um, and then go through the body if that is more comfortable for you. So, okay, it goes through right here so I would want it to go through the body about right here and you're just going to stick it um, under like one single stitch kind of move that back so you can see 
and moving in the direction that you are going to be uh, crocheting around um, counterclockwise. That's just the way that I'm doing mine. Of course, you can attach it however is most comfortable for you. So that's one way you can do it. Or you can kind of kill two birds with one stone, so to speak. And you can go through your stitch and your body at the same time. So here's the next front loop. And you can actually just go through your body and your stitch in one swoop and just kind of do it like this. So you see that I've got that front loop on there and I'm coming through the body and then just go ahead and pull up and pull it out. So whichever way is more comfy for you um, is how you can do it. Or if you have a method that you prefer to do that's different from what I've shown, you can go right ahead and do that. Those are just two different ways that I can uh, recommend. So we're just gonna do that all the way around. We're gonna grab that front loop and then we're going to work around um, the area that we want the nose attached in. And we're just gonna keep kind of spinning uh, counterclockwise to grab the new loops and attach them to the body. And the reason that we grab just the front loop and not the back loop is um, it makes it look a little bit nicer in my opinion. So that's why I have us just grabbing the front loop. I think it will lay a little bit nicer and looks a little bit nicer. So don't be too concerned with this particular project about if your stitches are going to show um, around your nose. This particular project is actually great for sewing on things because you can actually take this opportunity to kind of learn what you're doing um, in a very forgiving um, like manner because this um, nose all around it is going to be beard, which is what we're going to be using that white yarn for. Um, and then with the arms, when we attach those, um, you don't see where we attach the arms because they end up under the hat. So this is actually a great first project to uh, dabble into and learn how to attach uh, your limbs. Um, because with other amigurumi, a lot of times you're going to see the attaching locations and you're not going to at this one. So we have almost worked our way back around here. Just finishing up those final stitches. And I'm ending where I started. And then once you have that done, you can actually um, double check, make sure you're all happy, you didn't miss any loops, it's all attached well. Um, and then you can actually just hide your tail right in your body. So go in somewhere close to where you ended and just kind of stick your needle through and pop it out somewhere else. And then you're just going to pull on that needle. And it's going to pull this through and hide your tail for you. And then you're just going to cut it. So give a little bit of a tug and cut it right up to there. And then you'll see that this tail is still sticking out a little bit and you can just kind of squeeze and it just pops right back in. And then you have hidden your tail and you have attached your nose. So you can go ahead and discard your yarn scrap and you can go ahead and test your hat. So that is looking perfect to kind of start to um, sit over part of the nose and it's starting to look like a gnome. All right, so step two is going to be to form our beard. So in order to form our beard, it's actually pretty simple. You're going to take your white yarn and you're going to cut lengths of yarn that if doubled over are the length that you're gonna want your beard to be. Now, err on the side of caution and cut them a little bit longer than you would like because you can always trim them. So you're gonna be doubling over your beard and you're going to be attaching it around the nose. So it's, you're, gonna, uh, you're gonna choose how far down you want it to hang, usually to the bottom of the gnome. Um, and you could even kind of drape it over the nose if you want to get an idea for how long they need to be. So this is plenty long. 
Um, and then I will trim my beard once I get it all attached. So this will be plenty long for mine. Make sure you can see. Okay, and then I'm just going to trim it here. And that will be plenty long um, with it folded in half. And then I'm just going to cut a bunch of strands to the same length. Um, so go ahead and do that and then I will meet you back. Okay, now that I've got a hefty little pile of yarn scraps um, and you can always make more as you go. Um, and they're all roughly the same length. I wasn't, you know, super, um, like I wasn't measuring them out or anything, but I just kind of held up that first piece that I had measured and went with that. So I'm going to take my first one. And basically what we're going to do is we're just going to work all around the nose and, um, make our beard. And the way that we're going to do that is I'm going to start pretty close to the nose and you're going to stick your hook under a stitch and then you're going to take your yarn and you're going to have it um, folded in half and then you're going to put it on your hook and you're going to pull it through that loop. Then you're going to yarn over with both of these pieces of yarn and then pull them through the loop. And then they are nicely secured. And that is how simple it is to attach our beard. And we're just gonna go all around this area and fill it into your preference. So you can fill it in as wide, as long, as thick, as thin, um, as you prefer in whatever color you prefer. Um, I'm using white, but you don't have to use white for your beard, you can use any color. Um, Maybe you're trying to make it look like someone and you want to use like a black beard. You can totally go for that. So I'm going to start off by just making a yarn thread beard. And then um, for those who would like a brushed beard, I will show you how to do a brushed beard with a uh, pet brush. So I bought just a cheap pet brush off of Amazon and that is what I use to brush my yarn. I think it was like five dollars so it doesn't have to be anything fancy or expensive um, and you could even use like an old pet brush if you wanted to but I like having one specifically um, for my yarn so we're just pulling through these stitches and then yarning over and whoops yarning over with both pieces of yarn and then pulling through our loop on our hook and that attaches it nice and secure. So I'm just gonna keep doing this and working all around the beard, um, or all around the nose, and I will kind of time-lapse this because this can take a little while, but it's nothing um, complicated. I think after seeing it one time, you probably get the idea. Um, so I'm not going to uh, make you watch me very slowly transplant the whole beard. <laughs> Um, but feel free to rewind and watch that again if you um, did need a little bit more um, demonstration. And don't forget you can always adjust the playback speed. So I'm just going to keep doing this and uh, until I have a nice full beard all around my nose and I will meet you back. All right, so I am working away on getting um, my beard placed. And you, yes, it does take quite a few individually um, tied on strands. Well, technically you do two at a time, but that is why I'm not doing it step by step with you because like I said, it's just repetition uh, and it does take a while. So this would be a very, very long tutorial if I went through the whole thing. But I wanted to tell you when you're getting around your nose, don't be afraid to grab these strand or don't be afraid to grab these stitches where we um, attached to our uh, body. So you see how there is the stitch. Let me get in there for you right here. And it is even kind of loose and sticking up for us. There's a little bit of stitches like that all the way around. As long as you don't go too high up on the nose, you know, st stick to close to the base. 
Um, don't be afraid to um, loop some beard. If you can see that. Don't be afraid to loop some beard through there, you know? Um, that's going to get you uh, nice and snug up to your nose, um, hiding your body color. And then when you pull on it, you can't even tell. So that's all I wanted to say. I just wanted to pop in real quick while I'm working on this and tell you don't be afraid to get right up to that nose and kind of get in those side stitches on the side of the nose um, and bring that beard in. So this is how mine is looking and this is kind of the thickness I've got going on. I kind of... Um, work my way down a row of stitches so if you look you'll see that I'm kind of working my way down I did like all of these stitches and what I do is I start at the top you could really start at the top or the bottom and I flip them up as I go and then I just kind of work my way across doing all of those um, and so if you look at the bottom it's kind of similar to that and I'm just you know basically hitting up all of those stitches and working my way over. Um, and you can do this however you want, depending on what yarn you're using, you might not need so much um, threads for your beard. Um, like if you saw my Woodland Gnome uh, video where I was just crafting with you and making the gnome, um, not a tutorial, you'll see that I didn't need nearly as many um, strands of yarn with that particular yarn I was using. It just kind of filled out more. So this one takes a little bit more, but it's I'm almost done now at this point and it is nice and full and filled out. So you can just do it to your preference. And don't forget, you don't really need to do anything up here because your hat is going to go down to about halfway through your nose. Um, and these strands up here are just going to be coming out from under the hat. So I'm going to fill in a little bit more over here and see what we're looking like. Okay, my beautiful friends, I have gotten my beard all transplanted on. Um, a couple little tips. One, like I said, don't be afraid to use those little loops on the side of your nose at the base. Um, and don't be afraid to even kind of go under the nose. You want to get nice and snug around your nose. Um, and two, it's actually a good idea if uh, you prefer to have a smaller hook than what you used for crocheting. So here's the one that I used for crocheting, which was a 3.75. Well, I grabbed out a 2.75 for doing some of the transplanting um, beard hair <laughs> for yarn. And uh, wow, does that one hook size look so much smaller. So that can also help um, with getting under those stitches. All right. So here is what we are looking like, and I am happy with his beard now. Um, I am going to obviously trim it. It's going to be a little uh, scraggly, a little different lengths. Um, for the most part, I kind of like it looking scraggly, but you know, you have some that are going to be odd. Um, and so it's nice not to measure it, in my opinion. I kind of like to just sort of eyeball it. Um, and then they're all roughly the same size, but it's going to give you a little bit of variation. You're also going to get a little variation if you notice like these top strands because you're tying them on higher up on the face um, and they're like this roughly the same length as these lower down ones so um, they're going to come out shorter since they're tied up higher than the lower ones are and just to give you an idea of how I did mine here is the side here is the bottom so I didn't uh, fill in any of this you can go down as low as you want though if you want to go down further you can definitely do that and then here's the other side but then once you're done you kind of fluff it out a little bit and mostly focus on pulling them down and not out too much because if you pull them out a lot then you might end up with um, you know, a little bit of bald spot showing. And if you would like it pulled out, um, it actually kind of creates a little mustache effect. So if you would like it like that, you totally can. Just, um, you can even add more than one strand um, around each stitch if you feel like you want to like really um, thicken it up. I actually did do that in a few spots where I went around the same stitch twice. So, and I actually also, um, when I was tying them or pulling my loop through, you know, I did some of them upside down like this, and then when you flip them, it gives you more volume. And don't forget these top ones, they're not gonna show. The base of them isn't gonna show. So you can be a little bit more um, sloppy with them, I guess. 
Okay, so if you would like a um, unbrushed beard, then you can just stop here as far as the beard goes. Um, but I'm going to also show a brushed beard for those of you that requested a brushed beard or those of you watching who just would like a brushed beard because I did get about half and half when I was um, putting out feelers for what people would like. So um, you can go ahead and leave it here or you can brush it. So this is what I use to brush my beard yarn with and this is just um wags and giggles look at how cute this little handle is it's got like a little dog face and dog ears how adorable um and then this just came from amazon if i remember um i will link this in the description um I, it's not like an affiliated link i'm not sponsored or anything it's just what i'm using and it was um just a nice cheap um pet brush so it's got these little fine um like little metal teeth and you can use it to brush yarn. Okay. So, um, I don't really have a specific method to this. Basically what I do is I put some of the yarn over my hand and I sort of treat it like I would treat my hair. So I just kind of put it over my hand. I want to make sure you can see to protect the body of the uh, gnome. I don't want to brush it on the gnome. And if you want to protect your hand, it actually might be a better idea to put something else under it. So let me do that. You could put like a notebook, a piece of paper, um, really anything. I'm going to kind of go off camera a little bit to do that. So you can um, stick something under the thing, under the uh, yarn. It can be your hand. It could be a notebook, um, whatever, just so that you're not brushing the gnome body. Um, and then I just kind of start at the bottom and I do kind of try to hold on to it so I'm not pulling massively on the gnome, but um, it's not going to really hurt anything. It'll just kind of tighten your stitches probably. So I just start at the bottom and give her a brush and it will kind of elongate out your stitches and you definitely will pull out yarn. So you can brush it um, to the consistency that you want. So I just kind of start at the base and start working my way up. It's kind of doing a curly effect. And it's really this simple. I just repeat this um, until I get the texture that I want. Like I said, you will pull out um, yarn. That's that's just gonna happen. You'll have some that kind of stretches out. Um, and that's why I didn't go ahead and trim it yet. Um, I'm gonna trim it after I brush it. So this is totally optional. You can go with the uh, look that you prefer for your gnome. If you prefer a straight up yarny uh, look, then you can leave it. And if you would like to brush it, you can brush it. And I'm sure you could use any brush for this, but this type of a brush is really going to um, be your best bet for getting the texture that you want and kind of pulling apart those strands. Um, alternatively, I have in the past, um, before I had this, and also if I'm just working with a few strands, um, you can actually do them individually with uh, your darning needle or something thin. All you do is let me move some things out of the way all you do is you grab your strand of yarn and you just stick your uh, needle into it and you just kind of pull it through and this works really well for making curly hair too and this is why I usually try to start closer to the bottom because you can create tangles um, but yeah, you just stick it in there and you can do it individually. So if you don't have a, um, if you don't have a brush, um, and you don't mind taking some time and doing it maybe a little bit more tediously, you actually can just pull apart your yarn threads, which is essentially what we're doing. And then we're also kind of fuzzing them up when we brush them. And this will create like a curly hair. So let me do that to the strand just so I can show you what it looks like. And if you um, think that that would be something you're interested in, then you'll know. And you just kind of work your way up and you could do it as little or as much as you want to. And then that's what that looks like. 
So it gives like a cute curly effect and it actually does look different than brushing it out. Um, brushing it out is going to give like more of a fuzzy effect and then pulling it apart gives it this kind of curly effect. Um, and then I'm just going to keep brushing and kind of talking um, and giving you guys like different tips. So um, I did on my woodland gnome, um, I used like a roving style yarn for the beard. And if you're going to um, leave your beard unbrushed, that might be something that you want to check out also is that roving style yarn actually looked really pretty and I will pop up a picture of my woodland gnome um, to show you what that roving style beard looked like. I just tied it on the same way that I showed you to tie on this one and did nothing to it. That's just what the roving yarn looks like. Um, and if you don't know what roving yarn is, it is a type of yarn that is not, um, it's not like a bunch of plies um, spun together or twisted together. It's like more like if they just took this and kind of did this, like just sort of twisted it and that's how it looks versus these are made of individual strands. I hope that's a good enough explanation. Um, I actually didn't know the difference between roving uh, yarn or exactly what roving yarn was until recently. So I figure some people might not know what it is. And then I'm just gonna try to get the base a little bit here. And you can just take your time with it and uh, do it as little or as much as you would like to get the consistency that you would like. And I'm just working with a small section right now. Got the base nice, so I'm gonna work back on the length again. And I'm just going to kind of push it through so that I've got it really lined up in my brush. And then I'm gonna hold on and kind of pull. And you're just going to keep repeating this until you get to the texture that you would like for your beard. And this is the same as tying it on. I won't go through um, doing the whole beard because this is a time consuming process and you don't need, um, for learning purposes, you don't need to see me do it a million times. But you get the idea that this is what it's kind of looking like. And obviously I have pieces here that I haven't brushed yet since I was working with a small section. But I will go ahead and continue to brush this. And if you are brushing yours, you can continue to brush yours. Or if you're pulling apart your strands and you're wanting to go for this effect with the curlies, um, you can go ahead and start pulling apart your strands. And whatever texture you would like, I will meet you back when your gnome has the beard of your dreams. <laughs> Okay, so a little bit more advice on how to hold it. And like I said, these are just me trying to be helpful. Feel free to do it however is most comfortable for you. But taking a section, I'm putting one finger underneath and then laying it over and kind of securing it with the second finger. And then I am brushing it. I don't need to secure it at the moment, but I am brushing the base and what I was going to say um, that I think works a little bit nicer is not trying to pull through to the end, okay? So just doing a small section at a time. So kind of working at your base until you get it to how you want it. And then working on the next section, if that makes sense. So kind of working this base. Let's say that that's how we want it. And then I move my finger up and you'll see I've still got this part that's kind of more yarny looking. Uh, put my finger under that and then I'm holding it with my thumb here and I just start working on this next section. And I think that that works the best. So just a little tip. Here is our crazy looking gnome. So um, I would recommend using something underneath of it while you're brushing it, unless you're like me and you don't got time for that. So you just do it anyways and now your finger hurts. <laughs> um, I have a feeling it will probably look pretty scratched up later, but it does not yet. Um, but I just did it with my finger underneath of it because it was faster. <laughs> so um, you'll have lots of fluff in your brush 
And I'm just actually going to put this in my polyfill bag and use it as a little extra stuffing because it is very fluffy and might as well put it to use. This is super, 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 super soft. Much softer than polyfill. Um, you could use this as like fake snow or something even too. So a little idea depending on the time of the year. So here is what my beard is looking like. It is quite long and crazy at the moment. So um, if I wanted to sit him down, his beard would trail across the floor. And that is totally fine. Like if that's what you want, if that's what your uh, look that you're going for is, then you may not even want to trim it. But it kind of stretches and pulls on the yarn. And so you end up with these crazy, wacky, um, long beards. Um, I am very happy with how the brushing came out though. It is a um, kind of a long process. So if you, um, if your arm tires easily, maybe not the way that you want to do your beard, but wow, that, that fluffiness, it is so soft. And this is just that dollar store acrylic, you guys. So here's how it looks brushed and I'm going to go ahead and trim it. Look at this big old handful of beard. So fluffy so incredibly fluffy. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and trim it. I want it to fall to about like sitting height when he's sitting um, to kind of brush the floor, so to speak. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold it a little bit longer than what I'm wanting. Um, and I'm going to do it like this. And then I'm just going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut off this excess length. Okay, and then so that it's not so blunt, I'm just going to chop at it going up. Be careful not to cut yourself. Take your time. And I'm just going to chop at it facing upwards. This is kind of what they do for haircuts to keep it from looking too light, too blunt of an edge. Okay, I think that's probably good. And then I'm just going to pull out those little bits of hair that I was just cutting when I was facing upwards and cutting. And set that aside with the rest of my fluff pile. So this is kind of how that came out. so fluffy and luxurious <laughs> backed you up a little bit um you can see the edges of my workspace but i wanted to make sure that you can really see the whole gnome during this assembly process so here's how the beard is looking so far and we can kind of test it with the hat And I'll probably pull the hat down a little smidge more when I'm doing it. But here is how it's looking. I actually think I'm going to leave my beard a little longer like this because with this really fluffy um, look, I'm really enjoying it like that. So I think I'm happy with my beard. So after you're happy with your beard and you've, if you're going to brush it or pull apart the strands, you've done that. The next step is going to be to attach our arms. So you can go ahead and you can grab your arms. And you're going to want to do the same thing that you did with the nose, which is kind of sit your hat on and figure out where you're going to want your arms placed. And check out your arms to see if you, when you created your um, stitches across, if you angled them at all. Um, and if you did, then you may prefer one arm on one side more than the other. So check that out before you start attaching them, um, just to see if there is a preference that you have. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and kind of get an idea of where we want our arm put. So I'm thinking this for mine, um, it's going to be pretty easy because my nose is sort of attached, ending right at this, this row of stitches right here. You see that? This row of stitches above my nose. So I'm just going to attach my arm on this row of stitches and I know it will be hidden. And it's actually pretty easy to do um, your arm placement because of your beard. Um, one of the hard parts with amigurumi is attaching your arms and stuff evenly. But because you have this beard here keeping you um, centered, it's actually not going to be too difficult. Okay? 
So, um, like I said, in the interest of being accessible, um, I want to show a few different methods of attaching things. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to attach one arm with hot glue. And I already went ahead and trimmed my tails. Um, I went ahead and wove it in a few times and then trimmed it. And figure out your placement of where you're going to want yours. So I know I'm going to want mine on this line, on this row of stitches that is above the nose. So I'm just going to follow it around to the side. And I can kind of get a bird's eye view and look at it. And I can see, you know, what, what's going to be about half. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, and now for hot glue, the way that I would recommend doing it is just going in and putting hot glue on this inside of your arm, not on the top, but the inside of those stitches. So you see how I put it on one side and then I'm just going to find my row and make sure you know where you want to put this before you put it on here, because once it's on, it's not coming off. So there's where I want it and I'm just going to push and I'm going to hold it push down. You can kind of see it dipping in a little. Um, I'm applying pressure until I feel confident that the glue has dried or at least mostly dried. And uh, once you get it on there, it's not coming off as long as you put, you know, nice hot glue, let your glue gun really heat up. Um, and then once it's nice and hot, put your little row of glue and just push it in the spot you want and it will kind of um, melt the fibers together a little bit and it really just like secures it right on there. So I'm just going to hold it for a little bit longer. I like to make sure that it has dried. And this is how simple it is to um, attach something with hot glue. And your placement is so easy with hot glue because the only thing that you have to do is be quick about, you know, finalizing your placement after you get that glue on and put it on here before your glue dries. Um, but other than that, it goes exactly where you put it. So that can be a blessing and a curse, depending if you place it wrong, obviously, then that's not good. But sewing them something on, um, there's a lot more variation um, sometimes with where it comes out and where you meant to put it. So here's what mine looks like. And I didn't even bother um, hiding these little bits of tail that I cut um, because they're going to be under the hat. So here's how mine looks. It's got its little thumb over here. And I think that looks super cute. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to stitch on the other arm so that you have your options available. If you would like to, though, you can go ahead and you can super glue on that second arm. I am definitely going to want to moisturize where I um, brushed with that pet brush because I could just feel that skin is not happy with me. But I was just wanting to do it and not bother. And so that is how it's going to be. Okay, so I'm going to find where I would like to put this. And once again, um, if you would like to, you can pin your arm in place with some pins. And if you don't have pins um, or you don't want to, you can just kind of hold it with your finger. Keep an eye on this row that you know that you want to secure it to. And since it's attached to the arm already here, I'm actually just going to go up and through the um, stitch of this row, row that I want to work off of. So it's this round right here that I want to um, line it up with. And I'm just going to stitch right up and through the arm. Just like that. And then I'm going to pull it and it's going to try to take a little bit of beard with it. <laughs> so make sure you don't take your beard up there with it and give that a little tug. And I'm just gonna rotate. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna go into some stitches on the head or the body. It's kind of the head and the body for the gnome. And I'm just going to go up and through the top stitches of those single crochet stitches on my arm and pull through both, making sure to unloop this from your beard and give that a nice little pull and keeping an eye on this round because it's easy to to lose track of where you're at so this is the round we want to stay attached to and you can see that i had kind of migrated down a little i'm not going to stay down there i'm going to lift it up and make sure that it's on that row that i want it on and then i'm just going to do the same thing go down into the top of the uh, head slash body and then come out on the arm 
And then I'm just going to pull up and give that a nice tug. And then probably one more stitch, making sure it's lined up with that round. As you can see, this is the round that goes up over my nose. And so I know that this is where I want to attach it. And I'm just going to go in through the body and out through my gnome arm. And I'm trying to keep those stitches along the top where those single crochets are. And there you have it. And that's how you attach your arm with um, stitching. And then you can go ahead and weave your tail in a little bit if you'd like to. So I'm just gonna go to these stitches right to the side of my arm, give it a little tug, check that I'm happy with the attachment, which I am. If you're not, you can always double back. You've got plenty of tail to double back and stitch that on as many times as you would like to. And then I'm just going to insert my needle and pop it out at a different point on the body because this is a really easy way to get rid of that tail. And same as before, Go ahead and give this a little tug, trim it right up to the body. And then right there is where my little piece of tail came through. It's pretty difficult to see since it's the same color, um, but you just kind of poke around and massage and boom, it's gone. So it just hides it right in there. Um, and here is, whoops, <laughs> here is what our gnome is looking like. So he's got his little arms and they kind of stick out a little bit. Um, you can kind of push them down to the body if you'd like to. Um, and they can uh, sit flat or because um, they're crocheted kind of tightly, they can be moved up if you would like to. So whatever your preference is, since we didn't stuff them, they're pretty uh, malleable um, since we only stuffed the hands. And you'll notice that I have full range of motion with this one that I stitched on to flip it up, but I actually also have full range of motion with this one that I glued on because of where we glued it. So you really get about the same results and um, I'm gonna tug on both of these. Absolutely no issues. Like this is secured on just as well as this is. So don't feel um, limited by, you know, if you're not able to um, sew, maybe you're not able to hold a needle. Maybe this is like painful. Maybe you have arthritis or um, something that affects your, your hands. Um, you can hot glue it on and it will look just as good um, and it will hold just as well. So that is an option for you. Um, and then our next step is just to attach our hat and then we are done with our basic gnome. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. Um, I really tried my best to make it nice and thorough and um, easy to understand. So um, for this one, to give you the best of both worlds, I will start with sewing it on and then I will finish with hot gluing it on so you can kind of see both ways. Okay, so grab your hat and we left a nice long tail for sewing. I actually left an extremely long tail, much longer than I needed to. Um, sometimes I do that and that's totally fine. I would rather have more tail than I need than not enough. But if you do accidentally um, leave yourself too short of a tail, you can always just attach some new yarn um, and start sewing away and hide your tails in the same way that you normally do. Um, and it's totally fine. It's not a big deal at all. It's just a little extra work that you have to, you know, attach another piece of yarn. So picking where you would like your hat to, um, which way you would like your hat to face, I'm just going to put my tail in the back because your stitches, um, even when you do a slip stitch, they don't line up exactly perfectly. So why not put that part in the back is kind of my idea. Okay, and then you're just going to um, put that down. Make sure you leave enough slack in the front, but um, don't worry about it staying perfectly down. When you get to the front, you can pull it down to where it needs to be and make sure it's sitting exactly how you want when you're attaching it. So I am happy with this placement and I'm just gonna go to the back and here is where I am sitting. Once again, if you would like to, you can pin down your hat or you can just sew your hat on. So I would check 
um, every now and then just to make sure you haven't migrated your hat around too much while you're um, sewing it because you can do that. Um, just to make sure that you're covering, you know, the tops of your arms, the top of your nose, um, but you should have no problem with covering everything. So we're just going to do the same thing we did before. Um, we're going to go under a stitch on the body and keep in mind that you have already been attached to the hat. So we're just going to go under a stitch on the body. And then we're going to pop up behind this um, last row. And I did do a little bit um, of a flip up when I did that, that um, what was it, front loop only? Um, when we did our last round of this, we made it so that it kind of flips up at the edges. So I would go behind that flip up. Um, so you still get your little bit of a flip at the edges. But you could do it either way. Going to go underneath again. And I'm just going to work my way around going under these stitches. So this is one way that you could do it if you would like to. Just going through the body and up through the hat behind um, that last row of single crochet. That's the way I'm doing mine anyways. You can sew in whatever method you prefer. And I'm just gonna sew a little bit like this um, and then I'm going to show you how you would hot glue it on. Okay, so here's a little section. We um, stitched it from here to here and you'll notice you actually don't see any of the stitches. Uh, when you pull them through nice and tight, they cinch right up and you don't see them. So that is how you would stitch on your hat if you choose to stitch. You'll just go all the way around making sure that you stay over your arms. You'll stitch into the tops of the arms um, when you get to the tops of the arms. And for the nose, you can either choose to um, stitch into the top of the nose, maybe put one stitch just, you know, through the top. Um, I'll just show you real quick what I what you could do through the top, which also goes through the top of the nose if you can kind of see go through the top of your hat, go through the top of your nose, and then go through the top of your hat again, like that, and just do a stitch across there. Um, or you could just sew till you get to the nose and then continue sewing on the other side of the nose. And um, to do that, while you have your stitches, it's gonna be anchoring down your hat to the level that you want it already. When you get to here and you're done stitching, you could just push right through and come out on the other side of the nose and into the hat and then continue sewing. And that's probably what I would do because then you don't have any visible stitches up here, but it's literally secured down all the way around, secured through the nose. So this isn't going anywhere, coming back out with through the hat and then continuing to stitch down. And that's how I would sew it on if you're choosing to sew it on. So if you're choosing to sew it on, go ahead and finish sewing. And if you would like to hot glue it on, Stay tuned and I will show you how to hot glue it on. All right, so we've got our um, gnome here again and I actually went ahead and took out that stitch, um, that little bit of stitching I did just so that you could see from the beginning exactly what you're doing um, because that's what you're gonna be doing. So I've got my little bit of tail and I'm just gonna stick that up inside of here. If you would like to, um, I cut it short already since I was removing it, but if you would like to secure it a little bit so that you don't have to worry about, you know, keeping it stuck up inside the hat while you're gluing it on, you can take your tail, let me move this gnome over, you can take your tail and put it on your darning needle and then just kind of slit, slide it um, through a couple of the inside stitches, just the inside part of them, not through the whole thing, just kind of catching a couple of the fibers. And you can do that and then it will aim it up and then you don't have to worry about it when you're gluing okay so we're going to go ahead and we're going to take our gnome and i'm still going to put this part at the back because like i said your stitches are a little tiny bit uneven and why not always put your most imperfect side towards the back that's my motto um, but you can choose to put it however you would like and we are just going to make sure our 
nose and our beard and everything is facing um, and arranged the way we want it to be because once we put the hat on um, we're going to kind of be securing everything in in the way that it is um, and with hot gluing um, unlike with sewing it on you really have to kind of have everything exactly how you want it before you glue it on. All right so what we're going to do is um, we will apply the glue you can choose whether to apply it to the body or to the hat. Personally, I'm going to uh, apply it to the hat because I think it's a little bit easier to kind of see what you're doing when you're putting it on. So um, I think for the gnome, I'm going to start by gluing the front half on first. With something this large, you can put your glue all the way around it, but you only get that one chance to place it right and I would like to make sure that I'm having a chance to place it how I want it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put it uh, around half of the front of the hat, which is pretty easy to see because we've got our tail back here. Um, and I'm gonna put it around there, let's see. Yeah, I think I'll aim to put it on this um, row right here with the ridge. So I'll kind of put it right here maybe if anything more towards the inside than the outside um, because you don't want your glue to show and when you kind of are pushing down your glue could kind of push out so I'm going to aim to put it let me show you I'm going to aim to put it right here and if it's going to be more towards one side or the other side I would rather it be a little more towards this inside so going right here and you could go halfway around. Um, if you don't feel comfortable doing halfway around, maybe it takes you a minute to do hot glue um, for whatever reason, then you can just do it in um, increments. You could do a fourth of it, whatever you feel comfortable with. Um, and I'm explaining all of this to you before we do it because I want to make sure that you um, can do it quickly enough so that your glue, because um, when you touch that glue to your project, it's gonna start to bond immediately. And the reason I'm having us do the front first is, um, and I may not even do the whole half, the whole front half. I might do about between these two thumbs because what I want to do is make sure that I have it placed how I would like it over the nose, you know, kind of covering part of the nose. And then I can, I can add glue to anchor it down over the arms and then I can go to the back and I can add glue and anchor it down over the back. But the most important part of the placement for gluing this onto our gnome is going to be that it sits right with our beard and our nose. So that is the reason I'm going to do it that way. So without further ado, let's go ahead and put some hot glue on here. And of course, I am uh, in the process of my new stick going into my hot glue gun. So hopefully I don't have any issues with that because <laughs> right now it is currently not uh, in there yet. The glue is just at the edge. Okay, so I'm gonna try to keep everything into frame for you. And you do have enough time to apply your glue. Um, you have enough time to apply your glue with some reasonable speed. You don't have to like try to zoom through this part. As long as you let your glue heat up nice and hot. And some of my glue kind of fell down, but that's okay. All right, and then I'm just going to take this and I wanna make sure that it is on my nose how I want it. And then I'm just going to push it down. And this pushing it down is going to bond it to your um, yarn. And then I'm just gonna kind of uh, push and hold for a little bit. And you'll feel some warmth um, and that's good. Hopefully you don't feel any glue popping up through your stitches. Um, you know, be careful, wear little finger guards. Um, they sell little silicone finger guards at the Dollar Tree. Um, you know, wear something like that if you want to make sure that you don't get any glue on you. Um, most of the time, I never have any issue with the glue popping through my stitches, so I'm not too concerned. All right, so that is nicely attached and looking super, super cute. Loving it already. By the way, if you would like to, you can stuff your hat lightly. 
um, but you really don't need to because crochet holds its shape so well. So that is something um, that's optional to you if you would like to have a little bit of stuffing in the hat. Um, what I would do is attach it like halfway first and then stick some stuffing up there and I would just lightly stuff it if you're choosing to stuff it. Um, but I would attach it like halfway first because it is an open top. It would be really difficult to stuff it and then attach it. So that would just be my advice. If you get any of these little hot glue strings, just pull them. Don't worry about them, they're not a big deal. All right, and now we're just going to start working our way around. So we wanna make sure that it covers the top of our arms, which it is naturally sitting there. Um, and I'm just going to put some hot glue at the top of my arm and kind of extending into the back. And then I'm just gonna pull this down to a good level, like so and then I'm gonna push on it. And feel free to pull it down a little extra if you want. You have the ability to kind of stretch it into shape and um, push it down onto the glue as you go. So it doesn't have to be exactly where it just wants to naturally sit. You can kind of shape it and have that customization. So just push on that for a minute. And then I'm gonna turn it and I'm gonna do the other arm. And if your um, gnome comes out a little uneven or wonky, don't feel like upset about that. Um, it gives it character. Gnomes are very precious little um, individuals and having like, you know, a little wonky hat or you know, a little wonky um, beard or a little wonky nose or whatever. Um, it just gives us some character. So this is a good project to be your first um, amigurumi or your first gnome um, because you can just kind of roll with it. So if you have something that doesn't come out perfectly how you want it, you know, just keep practicing at it. Keep making more. Don't let it stop you. Um, and don't, you know, feel like your project didn't come out cute because of that. Like it's just a little quirk for your gnome. Okay, so um, once you've got that attached, you could just come to the back, kind of flip this up a little bit, and apply another row of glue, and pull this, I pull out away from my project and then down so that I don't run it into the glue. And then I just push on it. And there we have it. And there you have it, folks. I hope that you love your gnome. I hope he came out exactly how you hoped. And I hope that this was a helpful tutorial um, and that you found it useful. Um, let me know in the comments what you thought. And I would absolutely love to see your gnomes. Uh, if you would like to email them to me, my email is in the description. Or you can send them to me or tag me on Instagram. Um, I would love to see what you come up with and what color combinations you do. Um, and this gnome could really come out looking so many different ways just based on color uh, variations and even uh, doing an unbrushed beard or a brushed beard, uh, choosing different types of yarn. Don't forget, you could do this in any weight of yarn. Just use um, a, a hook size that is like one to two sizes smaller and you'll be good to go. So you could use a chunky uh, you could even use like a blanket yarn or a chenille yarn or you could use a smaller yarn and make a really tiny gnome. <laughs> so um, really customizable and I hope that you enjoyed. I hope you like your gnome and his little details and his little hands um, and I hope that he came out how you wanted. I will see you guys on the next video and please if you liked this tutorial don't forget to like and subscribe. Alright guys see you on the next one. Bye! Thank you.